we'll start talking about the cardiovascular system by focusing, not surprisingly, on the heart. So we have a model here showing the lungs, and we've got the right lung here, we'll take that off. We've got the left lung here, we'll take it off, and surprise, surprise, we can see the heart, the main organ of the cardiovascular system. Just to note, we've got blood coming into the heart through the inferior vena cava and superior vena cava. We have blood leaving the heart through the aorta, but also through the pulmonary trunk. So right now, let's focus on the heart itself and then we'll go into a little more detail thereafter. So let's start by taking a look at the heart from its anterior view. As though we were looking at a person's heart that was directly in front of us, we have a right side, a right border here. That's going to be primarily made up of the superior and inferior vena cava and the right atrium. Then the inferior border is going to be mostly the right ventricle. The left border will be primarily the left ventricle and then the posterior side is largely the left atrium. Now, if you're not sure what those terms mean yet, don't worry. This is an introductory video and we're meant to cover all that. Blood, as it enters the heart from the body, is going to be traveling in through the superior vena cava from the head and upper limbs as well as some of the torso and blood from the lower part of the body and the abdominal pelvic organs comes in through the inferior vena cava, just here, and it's going to enter the right atrium. So the right atrium receives deoxygenated blood from the body. It's going to pump, and that pumping of blood is going to pass through a set of valves located here between the right atrium and right ventricle. Now these have been removed for clarity, but there are going to be three cusps to these valves, and they are therefore called the tricuspid valves. The blood passes through into the ventricle, and then as the ventricle contracts, those tricuspid valves close so that we don't have regurgitation of blood back into the atrium, and instead it's going to pass up from the right ventricle through these valves to reach the pulmonary trunk. And that's going to carry deoxygenated blood from the right ventricle to the lungs. Now note that these valves are going to open when the right ventricle contracts, and then as it relaxes, they close so that blood doesn't just flow back, it only goes to the lungs from the right side. Now traveling to the other side, blood coming back from the lungs is going to travel to the left atrium. It's going to get there through four pulmonary veins. And even though they're veins, they're coming from the lungs, therefore they're carrying oxygenated blood. So that oxygenated blood is going to enter the left atrium, and the left atrium will contract and send it through a bicuspid valve. So it's going to have two cusps. The bicuspid or mitral valve allows that blood to go from the left atrium into the left ventricle and then the left ventricle will contract and the blood will pass upward to the aorta. Now note, the left ventricle has a much thicker muscular wall because it has to pump blood all over the body, not just to the lungs like the right side. So that blood is going to be propelled upward, the aortic semilunar valves will open, the bicuspid valve will close, and that blood will travel through the ascending aorta just here and then get to the rest of the body thereafter. So note that in both sides we have some little muscles sticking up from the wall of the ventricles. These are called papillary muscles and they are going to connect to the valves through little cords called chordae tendineae. We can't quite see those on this model but there would be little cords holding them there. Those are distinct from the trabeculae carniae which is the normal muscle that we just see in the wall of the heart here, and they are also distinct from what are called the auricles. Now let's put the surface back onto the heart here. The auricles are extensions of the atria, and here on the right side we can see this little dog ear right here, on the left side this one right here, and these auricles are parts of the atria. They have muscles in their walls, they're called pectinate muscles, and they're just going to help contract and send blood from the atria to the ventricles. Now the heart, like any other organ, needs to have its own blood supplies. We can see in red, this model is showing us some coronary arteries that supply the substance of the heart, and in blue, coronary veins draining the heart muscle and other structures, and it all wants to wind up in the right atrium along with all the deoxygenated blood from the rest of the body. So to see how we get there, let's take a look at it in situ. We'll just kind of put the heart back, and note that in addition, we can see the start of our entire vascular system here. So as the heart pumps, 
deoxygenated blood comes in through the superior and inferior vena cava. It pumps through the right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary trunk to the right and left pulmonary arteries, taking it to the lungs. From the lungs, oxygenated blood returns in red through the pulmonary veins to the left atrium, left ventricle, and then up the ascending aorta to the arch of the aorta, and along the way it gives off various branches that we'll talk about to the head, upper limbs, and then the descending aorta heads down to the torso and abdominal pelvic organs and lower limbs. We'll cover all those vessels in detail in a bit, but first let's take a look at those coronary vessels just a little bit more closely on a model that's specialized for that. All right, so with this model, we are actually going to get rid of a large portion of the heart right away so that we can see where the coronary arteries are coming from. So the coronary arteries carry oxygenated blood to the substance of the heart, so no big surprise, they have to be a branch of the ascending aorta. And so here we have the right atrium, and yeah, right atrium, left atrium, and so here we have the right coronary artery and the left coronary artery. Now there are many branches. We're just going to hit some of the high points here for this introductory video. But the right coronary artery gives off this branch as well as others that are traveling to the musculature of the heart. Right coronary artery travels around, gives off what's called a marginal artery along the inferior right margin of the heart, continues around and gives off a artery here called the posterior interventricular artery. So that's right there. Now, the left coronary artery tends to be fairly large and it gives off a circumflex branch that goes posteriorly and a very large branch called the anterior interventricular artery. This is also very commonly known as the left anterior descending or LAD artery. And then here we can see that there are multiple branches coming off it including just over here what's commonly referred to as the left marginal artery. If we follow this all the way around, it's usually going to give off some branches to the ventricle, and it doesn't typically connect up an anastomose here with branches of the right coronary artery, although it can sometimes supply blood to this posterior interventricular vessel right there. So those are the major arteries. Note that we have veins draining the same area. Paralleling the anterior interventricular artery in reverse is the great cardiac vein paralleling the posterior interventricular artery is the middle cardiac vein and running along this side of the right coronary artery is what's known as the small cardiac vein. These are overwhelmingly going to wind up in this large extension of the great cardiac vein called the coronary sinus and it is going to empty into the right atrium at what's known as the ostium of the coronary sinus so it's opening there so once again deoxygenated blood from the body gets to the right atrium through the superior and inferior vena cava and deoxygenated blood from the heart itself gets there through the coronary sinus. Now that takes care of most of the very basic anatomy of the heart. We will can talk about the rest of the heart anatomy in much more detail in a subsequent video. But next we're going to turn our attention to the vessels of the body and how they allow that oxygenated blood from the heart to get where it needs to go and how it returns deoxygenated blood to the right atrium so that we can have it oxygenated again and continue the cycle.